Good afternoon, Off the Bench Sports family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the first edition of Unbalanced, Louisiana's premier football show covering the state of Louisiana, coaches and players alike. Our first guest for episode one is Patterson Lumberjacks head coach, Zach Lockhart. What's happening, coach? Welcome. How we doing, Mr. Grayson? Great to have uh, have me on the show. Thank you so much for letting me be a part. Hey, it's awesome, man. I'm, I'm glad that you found the time in, in your busy schedule. I know you guys are, are busy trying to prepare for uh, the end of August when, when you approach the season. Um, now is a critical time for all high school football players and, again, coaches alike because you're close to your season. Absolutely. Uh, it gets so exciting at this point. So, uh, you know, time is, is ticking for our fall scrimmage, August 20th. It'll be here before we know it. So um, that, the guys are exactly so correct. energized right now. That That's exactly correct. And, again, this process of the this part of football process, which we all love and we get consumed by, um, it does our hearts joy when we can actually get there to the stadium and, and the kids got on their new gear or first time dressing varsity. And, and so the magnitude of all that when it comes together, you know, it, it, it for me, it sends real shocks of joy throughout my heart. And, and I just, you know, it my energy goes from 9 million to 900 million. So... Let, let's get started, man. Um, first time on Off the Bench Sports, man, and and I gotta find a new way to thread this because I've been I've been threading it this way for too long. You know, you gotta change it up or or get uh, stagnant. So, but just you know, give the Off the Bench Sports listeners a little bit about Coach Lockhart. Absolutely. Um, I'm from Colorado originally. I played Division Two football at Adams State. I was a, a strong safety there. I was a, a all-state performer uh, at a 5A program called Longmont High School at linebacker, and uh, got my start in coaching after um, after you know transferring to a Division One, trying to play. Ended up you know getting my foot in the door, uh, you know working with the coaching staff, and spent three years at Northern Colorado um, as an assistant receivers coach. Uh, from there, I went to Western State Colorado as the DBs coach and assistant strength coach. And then I got my foot in the door uh, in Division One football. Got hired at University of Louisiana at Lafayette in 2011, and I was a graduate assistant defensive line coach there, and uh, worked in the strength department as well. And you know, we had four straight New Orleans bowls. It was a, a great experience. Uh, I met so many great people, players, coaches, just everybody involved in that program during that time. Really, really affected my life in a positive way. So. Um, from there, I got married to uh, Christy Lockhart uh, now, and she uh, is, is from uh, Lafayette, Louisiana, and we have three beautiful kids and, um, you know, been able to, you know, follow the high school college coaching route all the way to, to my destination um, at Patterson currently, you know, and it's always been my dream to, to, to be a head football coach and athletic director um, you know, so I've worked hard to get here and I'm determined to continue working uh, as hard as I can with the coaching, great coaching staff that I have, uh, you know, to accomplish great things at, at Patterson. And we believe that we're going to do that very soon. Right, right. Um, I, I, I got to ask you this question because <laughs> it's most people's goal to get to the college ranks, especially if it's D1, you get there. Why come down to the high school level? Great, uh, great question. You know, I have a passion for, for high school put, uh, football personally. I just love the sport, you know, kind of like you saying you get energized. I, I still get goosebumps before every national anthem. And, um, you know, it was a great experience to spend 10 years coaching the college game. Um, and they, I don't take anything away from that. Um, you know, but it's very competitive at the high school level and, um, you know, very, uh, Good, good career, and we're in a good place, me and my family right now, and uh, really excited to, to start my second year, you know, with the Lumberjacks this season. No no doubt. Um, 
talk to us a little bit about the expectations um, you had once you decided that you were going to become a high school coach. You, you get an interview for the Patterson job. What was the interview like and how did you wow the administrators at Patterson to say, let's give Coach Lockhart a chance? I was just myself, uh, you know, I was just honest about, you know, uh, where I've been, what, you know, my goals are, where, where I'm headed, you know, what, what my core values are as a person, what I stand for and what I believe in. And um, I have a great administration here at Patterson High School. You know, I was hired by Lane LaReeve and he, he's a guy who really gets it when it comes to high school athletics. He, you know, he's a successful player at Patterson as well as uh, McNeese. So, you know, uh, he was extremely supportive, uh, you know, and now he just recently announced that he's going to uh, start his retirement. And uh, Miss Tara Fobb is, is uh, taking over as our new principal. And I'm so excited to uh, continue the, the working relationship that we've developed with each other. Um, and, and like I say, it's, it's nothing that, you know, you could do to wow somebody. It's more just being honest, being transparent, being yourself and, you um, you know, I think that helped me in the interview process more than anything. Right. Being a guy that's not from the Louisiana area, um, you know, again, also coaching at the college level, how much did you know about the history of what Patterson High football has been throughout the course of its existence? Well, I, you know, I got to know it very quickly. As soon as I moved down to Louisiana in uh, January of 2011, we immediately, you know, hit the recruiting trail. And uh, I believe that that particular year, uh, year Patterson had nine Division One signees. Uh, you know, this is a place rich with football tradition, uh, you know, been to the, the state championship, um, you know, multiple times. Uh, consistently a program that is, is spitting out Division One talent. And that has not changed since since I got here. So one of the, the biggest, you know, blessings as a head football coach is to help these young men navigate, you know, through their careers as, as high school student athletes to try to achieve their goals. You know, right. we were uh, blessed last season to have four uh, players go on and get the opportunity to play college football. And um, and we know we don't hope we know that each uh, year coming after this you know, we're going to have more and more. This is uh, a place that year in, year out has some of the top 5% of the talent in the state. Um, and uh, it's just something in the water down there. And it's an extremely exciting thing to be uh, be a part of. You know, I get to really see behind the scenes every day. And, um, you know, the state's going to uh, really pay attention to the uh, Patterson Lumberjacks after this season. I know that. Oh, that's, 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 that's a great confidence, man, to have. I always ask this question because I like to learn about coaching trees and where guys get their principles and philosophies from of guys that came before them that they saw as a as a coach, be it head or assistant. Um, what what guys? Have, have inspired and motivated you and gave you some a keen eye at this coaching thing? Great question. Uh, you know, I was heavily in, uh, influenced, as I said before, uh, you know, with my time at University of Louisiana at Lafayette and um, Coach Mark Hudspeth was, you know, the head football coach uh, at, for the Raging Cajuns while I was there. And he influenced me in a great positive way, you know, um, he, he kind of uh, set the tone for what it means, you know, to, 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 uh, to really run a program and build it from the foundation up. You know, I was able to see firsthand, you know, behind the scenes, uh, a program that never won a bowl game in their existence prior to 2011 had only been to one. And then for us to rattle off four straight New Orleans bowls with, you know, uh, eight win, nine win seasons uh, was was uh, phenomenal. And I saw how that's the biggest part. You know, it's about relationships with people. It's about work ethic, um, you know, and it's about getting good players, great players uh, together to pull together, you know, all for the common goal. And, uh, 
you know, so Mark Hudspeth is somebody who really uh, rubbed off on me. You know, a lot of great coaches, uh, you know, came from that same coaching staff, uh, you know, uh, that have gone on, done, uh, you know, uh, really impressive things throughout the, you know, landscape of college football and even professional football. And, um, you know, so another guy who, you know, really had an impact on me, well, was the defensive coordinator while I was there at UL Lafayette, James Willis. James Willis uh, was a very successful player in the National Football League and, you know, had learned a lot from Jerry Glanville and um, some great coaches like that, you know, and a lot of those things, uh, you know, coaches nowadays, you've got to be a copycat, you know, if, uh, if you see something good out there, you know, uh, be a thief and steal those things. So, uh, you know, the coaching tree really stems from a lot of the great minds, you know, that revolutionized college football, you know, Nick Saban and Urban Meyer and um, guys like that, Dan Mullen, those guys being around some of the coaches that, uh, that I was around, you know, I've, I've been able to, to learn through the grapevine a little bit of, you know, some, some ways to, to be successful. Right. One thing that makes a football team good is having great organizational skills from the top down. What's what's a practice scheme like for you guys? Good question. And, um, you know, uh, we we stay pretty, uh, pretty. I believe in two things when it comes to lifting weights, running, practicing. Uh, that with enough volume and enough variety, you're going to get better at something eventually. <laughs> so, you know, we, we practice hard. We go a- around the clock. You know, uh, we, we abide by the LHSAA rules on the time limit. Uh, but we, we believe in not taking a day off or a playoff. And, um, you know, that really uh, is something that we try to ingrain in them, uh, in their work ethic uh, every single day. Uh, you know, but a typical practice uh, for us is going to be extremely high energy. It's not going to be a three, uh, four hour practice. You know, uh, we may practice two hours, uh, but but practice harder than anybody uh, that that is going to be going against us on our schedule is what we challenge ourselves and challenge our guys to do. Um, you know, we go a lot of good on good. I, I, you know, I uh, believe in we call it sharpening our axe in lumberjack land down here and uh, you know, trying to make everything as competitive as possible from the weight room to the classroom to the practice field, you know, creating situations, game like situations, constantly educating them, but constantly, you know, pushing for our leaders to grow, pushing uh, these young men uh, to be in stressful football situations so that they can respond and overcome and adapt to any adversity that we see. So, uh, all the best I can tell you is our, our practices are very high energy uh, and very fast paced. Right, right. <laughs> I like that. No, no plays off, no days off. That's right. That's a JJ Watt quote right there. Look it up. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> the the aspect of increasing one skill is. It's, it's a really tough thing to do because sometimes kids aren't always self-motivated to get in the, the weight room and, and get bigger, stronger, faster, or let's go with defense since you're a defensive guy. Um, so sometimes as a DB, corner, safety, you have to run routes backwards. Um how do you get your guys to motivate, uh, to get them to see the importance of individual skill work uh, to help them be better? Good question. Um, you know, we, we believe in one of our core principles of compete every day. So give me, giving you some specific examples, we might have a finish drill in every uh, particular strength and conditioning workout. They might be broken into uh, offense uh, and defensive groups or you know, skill groups by, by, by position and things like that, but they're going to give, uh, be given an opportunity to finish, uh, whatever that is. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, go until failure, feet elevated push-ups drill, which we just did the other day. You know, it's phenomenal to see who steps up, uh, you know, and, and fights longer. Everybody's tired. So we challenge them. Okay. 
Uh, don't be selfish. Think about your team in these moments. You know, this is how you build those relationships, uh, you know, with this band of brothers we have on this football team. And when it's fourth and one with the championship on the line, you know that the guy next to you will bust his ass and do whatever it takes uh, for the team. So, you know, but uh, like I said earlier, with uh, volume and variety, variety is another big friend of our program because, you know, we're pretty multiple in uh, a lot of things in our program, specifically with the skill training, like you're talking about. For example, you know, during the uh, summer, one day we might have what we call a speed school. Another day it might be an agility circuit. Uh, another day it might be stadium runs and resistance runs. Uh, you know, other days, uh, you know, we're getting uh, different, uh, different uh, football specific drills, uh, that can apply to, to being better at, you know, the techniques that, that they have individually from offensive linemen to receivers and, and so on. So, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we really try to go into each day with a, uh, with a fresh mind and a blank uh, slate and challenge uh, ourselves as coaches to how can we top what we did yesterday. How can we make today more efficient, make, to, uh, make today a day that we grow more as a team? Uh, so we definitely don't have just, uh, you know, uh, set in stone methods and practice schedules and scripts and sets in the weight room. Uh, every day is an exciting new day uh, that we want to not waste a single second in our preparation. And, and what I truly believe, you know, in my experience is that the preparation is what's going to win the games for us. Uh, you know, not what you do when you show up on a Friday night. Facts. Those are definitely facts. Preparation, being mentally prepared, physically prepared, gets you or already puts you ahead of most because most do nothing. So that's a, a, a great philosophy to have, variety and all that good stuff. Looking at this pro, uh, principle now, um, sometimes being the head coach, you may or may not have enough staff to where you can just oversee the journey and make sure everyone is working hard. Is, is that the case there at Patterson? Do you have to coach a, a position or do you just oversee the the day-to-day -day activities of lumberjack football. Good question, and uh, this is something that we talk about as a staff constantly, and in, in challenging ourselves to be the most efficient staff that we can be. I'm blessed to be very multiple in a range of positions that I've uh, played on both sides of the ball, as well as coached. So uh, I've really uh, played and coached everything on the defensive side of the ball. I've played defensive line and linebacker and DB. I've coached all three. So I am a defensive guy, but I've been blessed enough, especially, you know, in the uh, college coaching um, experience that I've had to switch over to the opposite side of the ball. I've coached offensive line. I've coached tight ends. I've coached receivers at times. Um, and so that helps me oversee, you know, the big picture of our program. Um, I'm tremendously blessed to have an outstanding staff. Uh, our assistant head football coach, uh, Garrett Kramer, worked with me at University of Louisiana at Lafayette. He was just the head football coach at Evangel uh, Christian Academy up, um, up north, you know, a storied program. Uh, he was their head football coach this year. He's our offensive coordinator and assistant head coach. Uh, so he is somebody that uh, is really going places in this business and is like having another head coach on staff. And with me as an athletic director and all the things that I get pulled uh, aside to do constantly, it's such a blessing to have him. Uh, just got another great hire with uh, Josh Learman is a def uh, defensive coordinator for us. He's, he's had, uh, you know, 15 years of experience uh, as a coordinator at, at New Iberia and Bro Bridge and, and, and programs like that. So um, he brings a lot of knowledge, but we were blessed. We had 11 coaches on our staff last year. Um, almost all of them, you know, were, were great players, uh, either in high school, uh, uh, as well as college. Um, and, uh, so we've got a guy for every position and I've been blessed enough to be able to bounce around at times and, uh, really focus on, you know, uh, the, the position groups that, that need to be focused on by the head coach. So, right. Right. When, when you look at what, what you guys do on a daily basis, who 
who has been, and, and I know that just with this just being the start of your second year, like that's that's asking um, a lot. But who are some of the guys every day in practice that you know without a doubt that you can depend on to be leaders? On, on on the on the practice field or in the weight room or in the the sprint conditioning line or in the agility line absolutely uh so we talk about that constantly that is the most important thing in our development of, of our players is you know where do they shake out as leaders are they being accountable are they doing their job you know are they setting the right example for other players so uh, the first one that comes to mind is Kyler Paul. Uh, he goes by KJ. He'll be a senior um, this year. Uh, he currently has a uh, scholarship offer um, and uh, at Louisiana College and is getting a lot of interest from some Division ones. And it's because of who he is and his work ethic. Uh, he hasn't missed a single day of all of our summer conditioning, which which has been very rigorous. Um, you know, and he's been to multiple camps. Uh, you know, and he runs us up sub four five forty and every day in practice uh he's sharpening our axe because he's going against those dbs and um you know he, he's making the big plays and uh you know when it comes down to it uh he, he was a first team all district player last year at receiver and uh, honorable mention all state uh he's someone we can absolutely count on all the time uh another one is uh lonnie kinchin lonnie kinchin is also uh, a senior for us next year, also in uh, first team all district player and honorable mention all state. Um, he's the quarterback of our defense. He's our Mike linebacker. Uh, he, he makes the strength calls. He lines our front up. Uh, he does so much and he's a tackling machine. He's, he's definitely going to lead the state in tackles this season. He's a great kid. He hasn't missed a single day of summer conditioning. Uh, comes from a great family, just like KJ. Uh, you know, those those are two guys and there's so many more. I'll name one more just to uh, add one more a, a young player, one of our starting offensive linemen, Elijah Robertson. OK, we've got a couple uh, O-line, D-line guys that are getting some uh, attention from some Division One programs. OK, but uh, they as as great as they are and as great as some of our defensive linemen are uh, and how talented they are. Elijah Robertson is someone who's a blue collar worker. Uh, he, he not only never misses a day, uh, he's never not the first one. And when we, when we talk about those competitions that we do daily, uh, he will empty his bucket for you on everything he does. He's just a, such a uh, great character, hardworking, accountable young man. And, uh, you know, people around the state are going to know about those three guys, Kyler Paul, Lonnie Kinchin, and Elijah Robertson. I'm I'm really glad that you brought up linemen um, because that's part of what my next question is about. So sometimes, especially at really small schools, you know, you don't have the traditional 6'2 to 6'8 uh, offensive lineman um, that you can just throw out there and you know that he can protect or max block or pull or smash or what you know whatever the, the 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 blocking schematic is so the question is what practices have you guys implemented in helping to ensure that your offensive linemen know how to block and the schematics of blocking do you guys go to lineman camp do you bring a guy in or do you have a a, a coach on staff that played at a high level to help get those guys coordinated to where they need to be. You're looking at them right here. And uh, I, I specifically hang out with the offensive line. That is my favorite group. Them the defensive line. I stay in the trenches personally, and we just pass on things that have been demonstrated as effective at highly successful programs, you know, and we don't try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, most of the things that we're installing, uh, you know, with our offensive linemen and defensive linemen on a daily level uh, has been taught at the National Football League level, at the Division I level. Um, and, and most of it is, is a lot of the same terminology, even as, as some things that, uh, you know, uh, we did at UL when we were, you know, rushing champs of, uh, of the Sun Belt when I was there in 2013. 
Uh, we had a great offensive line coach who's now the offensive line coach at Colorado University. His name's Mitch Rodrigue. I was his uh, graduate assistant the first uh, year I was there and really just shadowed him. I got the uh, privilege of when he was on the road recruiting, being able to coach his offensive line with his terminology, and that's made it an easy transition uh, for me to, to communicate effectively with our offensive linemen and defensive linemen, you know, uh, how to do things at, at a highly effective level with the skills that we're implementing with our offense and defensive schemes. Change. Change is a necessary evil that we, we need to not only grow as athletes, but as people. Coming into your second year, right? Second year, new defensive coordinator. How much input are you giving or allowing your new DC to have total control over to implement what he believes is the best to get the most value out of your defense? Good question. Um, one thing that uh, is really exciting about Coach Learman is that uh, we have a lot of the same beliefs. You know, we run the same uh, uh, schemes and believe passionately in the same things. Uh, this program that we're running here at, at Patterson you know, is, 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 is trying to resemble some of the, you know, superior programs uh, around the country, both at the college and high school uh, level. So my job as a head coach uh, is to make sure that we are all on board and we are doing things that are in the best interest of the kids, first of all, in our program uh, as well. So, um, you know, for example, Nick Saban might get a new defensive coordinator every, sing, uh, every year or so because he loses them to be new head coaches somewhere and take the big money, you know, but they're not going to go drastically change in that defense. The, the right. next guy coming in is going to learn that. Uh, that's something that I really learned from uh, Mark Bonice, the head, uh, head coach at Brother Martin High School in New Orleans. You know, I was his defensive coordinator before I got the job at Patterson. Uh, he talked a lot about the, the process, just like Nick Saban talks, um, you know, and I came in and I ran his defense. You know, I didn't come in uh, starting everything from scratch. I learned what the kids knew. And as time went on, I was able to, you know, add and subtract things that I thought would help our specific defensive unit that year be the most successful that we could be. And Coach Learman has that ultimate control. You know, we may uh, script something in practice, uh, you know, that, that I'm accustomed to. And he say, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to change this, this uh, call right here. And I'm all for it. I'm like, heck yeah, let's do it. Uh, you know, because I believe that championships are, are one up front. That's why I want to focus on the offensive line and defensive line play. Uh, but also defense wins championships uh, and our style early. of play, protecting the football, uh, you know, and, um, and, and being smart. Uh, you know, with the football, playing good de defensive-minded football. Patterson, over the course of their existence, uh, most years always almost have been known to be an offensive juggernaut. What's the, what's the realm that you guys uh, play in to try to keep that uh, I don't want to use the word momentum because I don't know if that's the right word, but sure, sure. You know, what, what, what do you guys use to ensure that your offense stays fresh and um, invigorating? Great, great question. Um, so our offense, Coach Garrett Kramer does a great job. This is, this is an offense that, that he's really studied and he's perfected and he's brought a lot of uh, concepts that, that he – he kind of, you know, created a lot of these concepts. So it's going to be a very unique offense that I am extremely excited uh, to see. We've been blessed enough to see through spring ball in our game against uh, Cecilia all summer long in our seven on sevens. You know, we, we've gone against numerous teams and seven on sevens been very successful against some 5A programs, 4A programs, programs that have uh, been in the playoffs last year. Um, we have a lot of offensive weapons and that's going to be every year at Patterson. And it always has been, right. uh, the, the skill players are fast. They're competitive. It's tough to make the field, you know, uh, as a, 
as a uh, skill player on this team, we've, we've got some team speed and that really helps us, you know, run to the ball on defense and make some explosive plays on offense. Uh, you know, so uh, when I took over it, uh, you know, uh, the last pr- uh, few years, um, you know, they had gone to more of a, a pro style approach and, you know, been very uh, run oriented Last year, my first year, uh, we demonstrated that we could light it up um, passing the ball. We went to more of a shotgun spread, uh, you know, 10 and 11 personnel look last year. And we were able uh, to put up some really impressive numbers in the passing game, you know, but now my challenge is to be a balanced offense. And uh, we're really focusing this spring and summer, you know, on, on, on being able to run the ball when we want, how we want, uh, you know, being multiple in, in formations and personnel groupings and, and, and schemes enough to keep defenses honest where, uh, you know, they've got a lot to practice when they're preparing for us uh, each week. But uh, really excited about, you know, some of our, our, our weapons in the passing game. And uh, as a unit, as a team, you know, we've committed to the, the, the mentality that we're going to do what it takes, put the players uh, in place that we're going to be able to, to be a dominant rushing attack, be a very balanced offense, uh, and that'll help us uh, tenfold um, as a team. Having one year of head coaching experience under your belt at the high school level, um, I talk to a lot of coaches on a daily basis. Like The one thing that's constant and remains the same all at the same time with most of them is said, okay, I'm glad you asked. Thank you for asking. Scheduling. Yeah, that's right. Uh, most most coaches want the toughest non-district schedule that they can play because sometimes district competition may not fare so well, uh, and that's just a part of the game. But I think you're in the district with Donaldsonville, uh, Port Allen. James, Lutcher, Uh, White, Berwick. How hard of a schedule do you get to make and still be healthy enough to go into a tough district like the one you're in? Good, good question. Scheduling is so key to being successful in, in high school football, you know, and, uh, and you've got to be uh, intentional about it and how you go about it. Um, you know, just experiencing one year, you know, uh, the first year as I came, I didn't have any, uh, you know, input in the schedule. I took what the previous uh, coach had already set up, um, you know, and I'm excited about now, you know, you know, with the, the plan that we have moving forward, uh, I think we've got a, a great uh, mix of, of teams that are non-district this year that will uh, help us to, um, you know, earn those playoff points like like you're talking about, uh, as well as, uh, you know, really help us develop. You know, uh, there's a lot of schools of thought, you know, some people think, you know, play all the toughest teams you can. Other people, you know, think different things, but you know, we're going to be a team that says anytime, any place, anywhere. So, you know, we, uh, we, we talk about it, you know, it's about us a lot. It's not about our opponent. We know that, uh, that we can complete, uh, compete against bigger schools, uh, talented schools, uh, you know, so our challenge is, is more, uh, Hey, can, can we, follow the process each and every day to be the best us we could be, you know, all the intangibles that, that you have to deal with, you know, not committing pre-snap penalties, being disciplined, you know, doing our job on a daily basis. Uh, you know, those are the things that, that, that really are going to affect our, our ultimate success this season more than anything. How much did you deviate from previous year's schedule? Um, did you go completely in the opposite direction around the corner or does it resemble what 2020 was 2019 2018 or again you know did you really look to beef up the non-district schedule uh you know uh what i was able to do uh is find you know local teams that we could schedule 
that have uh, good programs, which we could get some, uh, get some, if we win, we get some points off their wins. Okay. So I really looked at who are the, the closest teams to me uh, in proximity, you know, that are the very best uh, that, that, that we can go against. Um, you know, not, uh, not traveling all over the state and things like that, you know, just for no reason. There's a lot of really, really talented football teams, uh, you know, a rock's throw from us. So, uh, you know, I scheduled, uh, you know, what we really are excited about. we got a lot of uh, big time games. Uh, we open up uh, against West St. Mary. We've got Franklin, which is a really good team, had some Division I uh, players come out of there recently. Uh, we, we, um, we play central Catholic, which is going to be a huge game for us, you know, really, really talented team. Uh, we play a meet. So, uh, you know, one of the top teams in the entire state with, you know, consistent division one talent. And I'm talking about 10 division one, uh, signees each year, you know, and then, uh, then we've got Morgan city before we start our uh, district play, which is a five, a team, you know, so I, I know that it's going to be challenging and it's going to prepare us for a really tough uh, district schedule. You know, we've got uh, St. James and Lutcher and uh, Edie White and Donaldsonville and Berwick. So this is one of the most competitive uh, districts around the state. Uh, but like I say, we're, we're, we're excited about the challenge and going to take it one day at a time and try to give uh, give it the very best that we got in everything we do. Right. In your in your first year, what district game made you say, wow, like either before, during, or after, what what game was was the one that you said this one we need to win, or this was an outstanding win? Great job, fellas. What team was that? Last year, uh, that was Berwick, which is a huge rivalry game. Uh, it was a team that we hadn't beat in the uh, you know last several years, and you know traditionally that's a team that. Patterson uh, would win almost every year. We have what we call a brag rag, which is a little banner that has the year uh, that each team wins on it. So luckily we were able to get the brag rag back uh, last year on our home field. It was really a cool atmosphere. We played it on a Saturday because uh, the previous uh, Friday night there was lightning. So we pushed it back. It was almost like a college football uh, atmosphere. You know, the, uh, the, the fans were, were into the game and it really came down to it. Our defense stepped up. Uh, and shut Berwick out and had uh, three interceptions and, you know, and we won, uh, you know, a very close game. Uh, so that one was one that, uh, you know, all the hard work, you know, you think about getting it and you only get so many opportunities to, to go out and compete on Friday nights, uh, you know, so that one was extremely rewarding um, last season uh, in district play. With, with history being its best teacher, how much do you guys talk about the history and tradition that is Patterson, again, Dalton Hilliard, um, the other Hilliard running back? Um, it's just been a lot of really great talent that has come from the Patterson area. How much do you guys discuss history and keeping up with the tradition of Patterson football? All the time. And uh, I'm blessed to have, you know, a, a coaching staff full of guys who, who played here. They're able to you know, spread those tales every day, talk to these guys, uh, you know, uh, about all of the talent that's come through here, especially the, you know, the Hilliard brothers and Ike Hilliard and Dalton Hilliard. And we stay close with them. Um, Dalton Hilliard came to our uh, golf tournament this year. He signed a, a helmet for my son. So, uh, you know, he, he's a role model for us. And it's really inspiring for our guys to be able to say, Hey, this guy sat in the same seat that I did at Patterson High School right. and was able to accomplish such amazing things, made it all the way to the uh, Saints Hall of Fame uh, in Dalton Hilliard. And it's not just uh, guys like Dalton, you know, uh, we, we've had uh, more recent players, um, you know, uh, signed with Division uh, Pro, uh, One programs, uh, come and come back and talk uh, with our players uh, come back, come back and, um, you know, tell them what it takes to succeed, uh, at the next level and how hard it is to get there. So, so right. we've been blessed, uh, you know, to have so much tradition here and we definitely respect that, honor that and, uh, and want to teach and carry that on to our players. No doubt. No doubt. Thank you, coach Zach Lockhart for joining us 
on edition one of Unbalanced. Um, it's been nice chopping it up with you, man. Um, any, any any final words you want to uh, put out or statement? Stamp it. Who that? Go Jacks. There you go. There you go. Thank you again, Coach Zach Lockhart. Patterson Lumberjacks football. Thank you. Remember, get off the bench. Get into the game. Thanks. Appreciate you. Talk to you soon. No doubt.